However, there was a defender who personified the phrase, no nonsense, it was Gordon McQueen. From a young age, this strong yet gangly lad loved playing the beautiful game. After starting out and standing out at St Mirren, Leeds United wasted little time in swooping to sign the 18-year-old. They paid £30,000 to secure his services in 1973, and the fee would prove to be a bargain. In his first full season, he helped Don Revy's side go 29 league games unbeaten, culminating in a league title win. Gordon formed a miserly centre-back partnership with Norman Hunter, and his performances earned him his first Scotland call-up in 1974. The following season, Leeds entered the European Cup, and Gordon continued to be tough and uncompromising at both ends. He helped himself to three goals during his team's run to the final, missing out on the showpiece itself after being sent off in the semi-final heroics against Barcelona. He took his club form onto the international stage and began to score goals for Scotland. Gordon emphatically nodded home against England to help his beloved Tartan army to a famous win at Wembley, a victory which sparked even more famous celebrations. Gordon's career was going from strength to strength, but the same couldn't be said about his club. He became a standout player for Leeds, but they were really starting to struggle. Manchester United had watched Gordon's rise and Leeds decline from across the Pennines, and in February 1978 they pounced to get their man, spending nearly half a million pounds. He endeared himself immediately to the fans, saying that 99% of players want to play for Manchester United, and the rest are liars. Indeed, his good friend and former Leeds teammate Joe Jordan had also recently swapped Ellen Road for Old Trafford, illustrating Gordon's point beautifully. Within 18 months of arriving at the club, Gordon helped United reach the 1979 FA Cup final. Once there, he scored a late goal as the Reds came back from 2-0 down against Arsenal. And McQueen is the man who claims it. Only for the Gunners to snatch the cup away from United with a last-minute winner. Gary was a good goalkeeper, obviously, and um, ah, he maybe, yeah, he made a mess of it. <laughs> Not letting him away with that one. <laughs> Despite this disappointment, there was a feeling that Gordon and United were a perfect fit. And it's Wilkins and McQueen. Yes, Shelton absolutely beaten. All ends up by Gordon McQueen. His measured passing and exceptional sense of anticipation made him a key man in the Reds' campaigns in the early 80s. And in 1983, United may have lost the League Cup final to Liverpool, but they put that disappointment behind them to lift the FA Cup after a replay victory against Brighton and Hove Albion. Gordon left the club two years later, after the arrival of Paul McGrath, and retired aged 33. After brief spells coaching in Scotland, Gordon linked up with friend and former teammate Brian Robson when he became manager of Middlesbrough. Gordon was recruited as reserve team coach and played a key role in developing the Teesside club's youth players. He also enjoyed spells as a scout at the club and regularly featured on Sky Sports and MUTV as an opinionated pundit, even at times being questioned by one of his daughters, TV presenter Hayley. Gordon was one of the game's real characters, both on the pitch and off it. Whether he had his boots on on the turf or a microphone on in the studio, you knew where you stood with him and you knew to expect quality. Over it comes towards McQueen! footballing family simply won't be the same without him.